The Tuffle Commute, Season 11, Episode 3, Emergency Episode, Sick, in which Sean and I talk about all things related to health and English teaching. Let's get going. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Tuffle Commute. I'm one of your hosts, I'm Sean, and the other host is... Lindsay, I'm here. Hello everybody. Hi Lindsay, how you doing? When, when, you, when you contacted me and said, uh, let's do an episode on sick, I thought, uh, you know, I wanted to say, but the episodes are always sick. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so I'm down oh. with the kids, I'm down with the you're kids. Da- he's down with the, you're down with the 2004 kids. Oh, is that for, oh, oh, what's the word now? Oh, well, I, 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 I don't know. I, I'm not I, sure. I, because my son, my, my five and a half year old son, has now started saying sick. And I'm like, oh, really? What? Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the Temple Commute. We're a podcast for language teachers, and it's not about language teaching, but the topic does come up frequently. And this episode, as I said at the top, is an emergency episode. We had another episode planned, but then with all the things that are happening, are, am I going to say the word or are you going to say the word that nobody wants to hear anymore because we're just sick of it? The, the sick of the word sick. Now, I know what you mean. Sick of the word, yeah. You mean the, the C word, the COVID-19? Yeah, the, yes, the, yeah, the COVID coronavirus word. Um, because that's sort of dominating so much of everybody's brain space, it made us think about things on how that related to English language teaching um, and health and sickness in general. So in, in this episode, like in all other episodes, we take a topic and we explore it. We should put a warning up because I think people probably are sick of hearing about the yes. virus. We're not going to give but, updates on the virus. We're not going to yes. give uh, advice and we're not going to spread uh, conspiracies or speculate about <laughs> origins or anything like that. We are going to talk though, uh, using that as a, a launching point, we're going to talk about uh, sickness. The two things we will talk about is the, the one interesting thing I really like about it, and secondly, because uh, um, I think in Europe the, the most the most uh, affected country at the moment is uh, Italy. I do we do have an interview with a teacher in Italy because I think it would be interesting just to get their perspective from it. Yes, but as over the recording that, this, Italy has closed all schools and universities around forty eight hours ago, twenty four hours ago. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Um, so um, I being. The, the, the way my mind works. The bit I like about this virus, that's a very odd thing to say, isn't it? Is the advice about hand washing. Yes, <laughs> we're supposed to wash our hands frequently and for uh, it's 20 seconds that you're supposed to wash your hands. Frequently. Yeah, yeah, uh, it is. And um, so, um, so I'm, 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 as I'm sure listeners probably saw that when this kind of 20 second advice came out, um, the, a, the, the advice that came with it is like teach people to say, um, uh, sing happy birthday. So as you wash your hands, you go and have birthday. Do you have, you know, you, you yeah. sing that. So if, if you, you sing, sing the whole song, song like it, it, even up to like, dear Sean, happy birthday to you, then I can turn off the tap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as long as you do it twice. Okay. Oh, I have to do it twice. Yes, oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And okay, as my son seconds. says, can my son said, can the second time can I sing the silly version? All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'll say to you, dear, dear poo face, or something. Yeah. Like that, that. Yeah. Well, actually, yes, yes. You've met my son. You know what he's <laughs> what his favorite word is. Um, so, um, so of course, social media takes to this uh, as they do. Twitter hashtag start, and we, there are the twenty second. Um, 20 second choruses that okay. um, that replace happy birthday so um there's a link which i think you'll find in the british nme and also in the in the la times online which of course we'll put in the show notes uh, a okay. list of a list of songs uh with it so um i quite like one of the songs is um culture oh, 
Kama Chameleon. <laughs> so you know, so you sing watch... Kama Chameleon, Kama 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 Chameleon. I am really sorry, audience, for singing. You come oh, and go. Yeah. So if you go through that up to red, gold, and green, then you you're able to wash your hands. My oh, other I like, fact... I like this list. I like this list. I would Have you seen the list? Sing... Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. Uh, let's go through a couple of them. I would like to sing um, Toto's Africa. Um, that could let the chorus last 20 seconds. Or Prince. Yeah, the thing, the thing I learned red. about that. The thing I learned about that with Toto is I've been singing the chorus wrong for years. Oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> I like Jolene as well. Jolene, 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 Jolene. I just think, you know, when you think of it in back and when they do comedy sketches, I just feel that there's, there's this there's this moment, you know, a load of, load of uh, and I'm going to say men because I think it'd be funnier with this uh, urinal moment where they all go to the toilet and then they're all turning around to wash their hands and you, yes. get, uh, you, get, you get them all Everyone's just singing, singing, Jolene, singing Jolene. different songs. <laughs> Excellent. But, so um, I guess the I guess the uh, the the uh, the thing is, what would be we we should have thought about this. We should have, what what would ELT songs could we have? Oh, or, or what would be the ELT equivalent to last twenty seconds? Like like recite the irregular verb list. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> maybe well, be, maybe people would. I can understand if people prefer to sing Raspberry Beret than just say uh, sing sang song begin begin begun. <laughs> How about how about yeah? Read a page of entries. Read a page from the dictionary. Like have I can see your material history. writing mind ticking over now. Going, oh, how can I get that into my next course? Oh, book? exactly. Yeah, twenty <laughs> seconds. What can you do in twenty seconds? Can you do a gap fill? I suppose. Or could you do a? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Many implications here. Okay. So, uh, so season season eleven, episode four will be twenty second activities. Yeah, <laughs> twenty second activities that you could do uh, while washing your hands. Learn learn English while English. washing your hands. Uh, ELT for washing your hands. Yep, yeah, yeah. There's a whole new ESP market coming out there. Um, so that was the bit. That, that, that I think that's the only the one bit I uh, want to really talk about. But I think we perhaps uh, should listen to Kate and see what Kate's got to say about what it's like in a place where all the schools have suddenly been closed. Ready? Okay, let's go. So, as I said to Lindsay, I happen to know people that in Italy that were uh, suffering a bit. And one of those people, well, not suffering, but were, 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 were probably further down the coronavirus route than I am here in England. Uh, so I'm really pleased that uh, from life from quarantine, as they say, these days, I'm joined by Kate Knight. Now, Kate Knight's in Milan. She's the uh, Director of Studies of International House Milan. Uh, hi, Kate. You're right. Hello. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Gone stare crazy yet, or is it a? Um, yeah. I mean, it is. Uh, there is a certain amount of cabin fever going on. I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I don't. I mean, everybody thinks about the quarantine, but I, 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 so the schools are closed. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I guess you've got kids, so your 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 kids' schools are closed as well. So that's so right, essentially yeah. you're lock you're in the flat and you can't go out. Or I mean, how does it work? How's it working? Okay. Well, we're not actually we're not we're what in Milan itself is what is called the yellow zone. Oh, okay. um, so we're not actually in the the red zone itself, whereas you literally cannot leave and you know people can't go in or out, uh, which you right. have around like Codogno. Uh, which is a little bit further south of here. Um, so yellow, where we are at the moment, means that you you are free to go to a degree, but there's not really much you can do. Um, so the as you said before, the schools are are closed. So that's obviously um, affecting work, as in the language school. Um, not that we're not busy, because we are, um, but that uh, we, there's lots of things going on, but we can't actually have students in the school. But as you said before, anyone who has families, it's, uh, that's been the most stressful thing, because you've got children at home full time. Um, and even for, um, for example, most offices uh, any any company that isn't um, manufacturing or you know something that has to be yeah. physically there, everyone's smart working like from home. So people are trying to trying to have two hats on at the same time, basically. So being a but good parent and doing your job well, sort of simultaneously, which is not easy. Yeah, I must admit, the conversations I've had, that's the kind of thing that, that I think is, sounds the most stressful. It's actually okay. What do I do with the kid for two weeks? That, you know, when you can't really 
go anywhere and do anything. There's been um, a lot more TV than there would usually be, I have to say. <laughs> I, I, I bet that has. And um, you say, uh, so I, I heard about the red zones today. I was talking to some other Italians today. They were talking about the red zone. They were they were kind of a flippant hello from the red zone. And, and then somebody else was saying like a hello from a deserted Milan. Is Milan is Milan really that deserted or is it? Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty quiet. I mean, people have been told to uh, avoid crowded places. Um, I mean, even things like the the public transport system is all still running but even like during rush hours people send me photos of like empty tube carriages and there's just there's not a lot of people around uh piazza duomo obviously that's normally bringing with people that there's not a lot of people uh, around to be honest i mean i haven't really been out and about that much anyway because between right. work and doing things we kind of and between house park house and park occasionally as well that's about as far as supermarket as well which even there uh, but that's do, do, just the do your kids understand it do, do, do your kids get it do they understand what's going on um well my they, my children are quite young my son my eldest is four and a half the little right. one's only two so i have explained parts of it to my my eldest um and he understands a bit that there's uh, because he wants to know why he can't see his friends why he can't yeah. go to school um but obviously trying to explain it in a way that's age appropriate and doesn't worry them uh, that's quite hard yeah yeah i just kind of try to teach my son to make sure he washes his hands for 20 seconds is quite hard in, in that in that sense just yes, like why, exactly. why stop putting your hand in your mouth will you it's kind of that kind of stuff um so i mean you see we you see a, a british media is, is nothing if, if it's not sensationalist so we do get lots of you know really good sensationalist reporting over here and we're, we're, we're seeing the toilet rolls shortages in sydney and you know the hand sanitizers have run out mm. in the uk what's, what's it, is that is are the italians a little bit more sanguine about it a bit more laid back about it well i mean i have to say after i mean the first uh, when it all sort of kicked off well, almost two weeks ago now um those first few days were kind of panic stations and um that was i think people um, myself included it is a bit shocking because you hear about things you read about things and then suddenly it's on your doorstep and you know you do feel nervous about it and uh, the first few days were the, were very eerie in terms of um people just disappearing from everywhere i remember my husband went to the supermarket um the day after just to get do a normal shop and he sent me he phoned me from there and just empty shelves the whole right. we have a massive uh, supermarket two-story like supermarket at the end of our just shelves and shelves and shelves of empty things and it had just been completely and it was wow. like that for a few days um and then i think after the initial kind of panic sort of stops and the supermarkets are you know, sending signs saying please don't overbuy you know we're going to continue be restocking etc then and and just generally as well things turn from being a, like a shock and then it just gets it just turns into the new normal really into normality. I yeah, yeah i guess yeah yeah but obviously from i mean you work at a uh, an international house which is a, a private school all the schools are closed but I mean, the state schools uh, down but the private schools obviously rely on clients that's the way they work so mm -hmm. what uh, what kind of effect does it have on the school how is the school coping um well we uh we had just started uh, developing or looking into products because we wanted to, to start selling uh, some online uh, courses at our, our school. It's something that we were looking to do over a number of months and we'd got to the stage where we'd started researching a few areas. We'd done one training session with the teachers from one of our teachers who is an expert in this area who'd done a great training session on Zoom with our other teachers. Uh, thinking that we were going to start, you know, building up from there, and then suddenly, this is some. This happened uh, in kind of fast forward, basically. Right. Um, so the first week that we were off, uh, we were off. We were closed completely. Um, everything was cancelled. All the lessons to so all the teachers. We set um, various uh, activities, projects for them to do. They were designing. Less. They were first of all testing out the platform, um, meeting together in groups, uh, trying out different things sharing group sharing uh, like a troubleshooting document so the things that could go wrong trying it out on different devices looking at different views testing out some lessons so they had a bit of a practice between themselves and fed back to us during that first week while we were trying to plan how we were going to roll things out and then we started uh, then offering courses first to our individual 
students, one-to-ones and two-to-ones. And then um, uh, from um, this week, we've started um, offering also to our, our group courses. So uh, we'll buy net, net from next Monday, almost all of our courses will be available online except for 11 and age 11 and below, which we just couldn't face right now. I don't even know, <laughs> I don't even know if it's feasible. I mean, that's a, that's a, if the situation right. continues, then it's something we're obviously going to look into. But for now it's, uh, that's, so that's basically in the, in the space of two weeks, you've gone from teaching in a physical classroom to teaching in an online classroom. Yes. Yes, quite, it's been a big change. <laughs> yeah. quite an and how are the teachers kind of coping with that? Do you know what I, we were just uh, saying today? So we had a teachers' meeting this morning on Zoom. Yeah. And um, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm absolutely thrilled with the way that the teachers responded. I mean, I think they've just been, they've just been fantastic. They're straight away. Uh, I mean, obviously, when you're changing something and you're doing something completely new, we were worried as well when we were thinking about this project in a you know rolling it out in a, in a medium long term you know dealing with people who are worried about how they were going to respond to it how we could make sure it was positive for everyone and suddenly kind of throwing it on them like this mm. we thought that there would be a lot of um you know there would people would ne not necessarily all respond to it positively but they've just they've really been fantastic and um, they've really used each other as a resource and and uh, yeah generally it's been great and the, the feedback we've had so far from the students has generally been all very positive as well. <laughs> Do you think there's a danger that when everything passes that the, uh, the, the, that you'll stay online then, or is it? A... <laughs> well, there is that. I mean, yeah, I think that. Um, well, I mean, I think the the ideal situation there is now is that people will realise that there is options. I think, yeah. and there will be there'll still be some people that will want to come in and have the face to face aspect. But we, by the end of this, whenever this will end, I hope that we'll all be at a stage in the school where we're very confident with both types of lesson and that we can offer actually a good viable alternative as well as a sort of separate mm. product so who knows um how it will end up yeah it, it seems to be that i mean I, I, it's amazing how much clamor there is uh, for it the online uh, thing I, I was helping out you know wearing a different hat uh, with italians today and all the questions were like how do we get online how do we provide a lesson so it kind of it's a strange way that this might be the kind of a tipping point into into online teaching you know it's mm. been around around the around the fringes for a while but now well it's, it's kind given of given us the kick we needed yeah it's, i guess so <laughs> and i mean generally speaking the teachers because a lot of i mean in a private language school you get a mix of teachers have obviously come into uh, milan for a contract and stuff mm -hmm. and did, have you found people just you know wanted are happy to stay or have you been kind of having to do lots of extra pastoral kind of care to to make sure teachers are okay or um, how, how have the staff reacted generally not about online i'm even talking about the situation yeah, okay the about the situation yeah i mean again um i think we've made sure we've kept in contact with everyone we've checked um about their their situation to make sure everyone's uh okay i mean i have to say a large percentage of our teachers are actually are from here or have lived yeah, here for okay. a while so we don't have too many teachers who are are, are new and they're uh, kind, of, or kind of on their own here in that sense but those people we've obviously made sure that are, are, are looked after I mean also on that side of things as well it's also important I think to remember that it's one thing for, for contract teachers as well who maybe still obviously in terms of salary still getting getting paid but for freelancers which a large bulk of people are in uh, who work for private language schools it, it's you know can be quite a scary time just because yeah. you don't you know you could go up to a month without any salary yeah. um, and so trying to make sure that you know we 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 share out the work that we've got to make sure that everyone can can cope you know financially uh, we know just yeah, meeting the mean, ba basic needs basically of everybody it's one of those things, I mean, there's a lot of talk about the zero, I mean, ELT in many places is a zero hour contract uh, profession and it is one of those things that uh, it is worrying, I guess, for freelancers mm -hmm. that, that these can, can come on. Uh, so two more weeks of uh, confinement, I believe. Uh, well, yeah, it definitely until the 15th of March. Um, and then, yeah, who knows? We're, it's, we're just kind of making a plan A and plan B for, for every week. For which, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, and seeing how it goes, really. Well, they often say that uh, directors of studies have to be ready for anything, and um, I'm sure that when you took on the job originally, a worldwide pandemic wasn't something that was in, 
in, in the it's job description. Not on my job description. <laughs> but now you, but now you can add it to your CV and skill set. Anyway, okay, uh, stay safe, uh, wash your hands, as everybody in the UK would tell you, and, and thank you so much for your time. Uh, and hopefully, the situation will resolve itself sooner rather than later. Thank you for speaking to us. Okay, thanks very much. Bye bye. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd want to be uh, at home for uh, for two weeks. <laughs> I don't know. I was talking with a friend about it. Like, if I had a good internet connection and some good games, would that be okay? But I'd probably end up having to work way more. Because the yeah. other thing is then, like, you'd be like, there's no, you know, just stuck working all the time and i guess case. i guess for us we work at home a lot anyway so there's kind of that advantage but yeah. just but bear in mind the good internet one of the things that i've noticed and i have uh for me because i obviously um specialize in when i specialize in online learning the lag is terrible yeah, uh, because because everyone's I, I, everyone's at home on the bloody computer yeah, now when they should yeah. be at school <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so i was i was trying to run a, a, an elt event for or helping out an elt event in with in asia uh, last week, and um, there's lag because everybody's online. And uh, oh wow, was, yeah, I bet in China the internet is slowed right it's down. Kind of, during it's just like day. horrible. And in, and yesterday, in, in, in I was um, helping out an, an Italian event online, and there was lag everywhere because everybody's online, everybody's at home and online. So yeah, yeah but I I do look around. Uh, this <laughs> as you know, I'm a board gamer, so um, I do look around thinking, wow, I could just play games all day. But That's true. Um, That's true. and if you are, if you are a board gamer, then obviously Pandemic is the game to play at the moment. I know, <laughs> isn't that freaky? If you've played Pandemic, it feels so much like it here. Um, if you play, if you played Legacy as well, but the Legacy yep. version. This is very geeky. The name of the the, the disease in the in the in the Legacy version. It, is, is not that dissimilar from COVID. no that's right it is, it is very similar. all right let's, anyway. we're geeking out we're geeking out yeah let's take a break so i brought something to this episode because obviously you know thinking of la we're language teachers so thinking of language and one of the interesting books that i remember reading and having quite an effect on me um was a book called uh Illness as Metaphor by Susan Sontag. And this was a, okay. quite a well-known book in, in medical circles where what, what, uh, it was a book about cancer and it was written in 1978. It was a critical theory um, that challenged the language that is used around cancer that at the time was seen, yeah, in, in just with the way people talk about cancer. So like, like metaphors, like cancer as a war and as uh, the illness as a war. So like you're struggling through cancer, like, you know. Oh, okay and I get over it. But also there was like uh, around 50 years ago, the language for people with cancer was sort of that it was a disease that afflicted people who lacked um, passion. You know, it was sort of like a lethargic disease. And, and if you were uh, like, if you had it, you had no passion, sensuality, et cetera. Right. And so, right. Um, and, and so like whether or not the language around it helped cause depression associated with cancer or the other way around. Oh, so it kind of becomes like a vicious circle. You, you, you're you ill, exactly. but then the language around exactly. that is ill. So and it, and it she, she, drew the, she drew a link to uh, tuberculosis, which uh, uh, around 100 years ago was seen as a creative disease. So um, some people, healthy people, even wanted to look as if they were ill with tuberculosis because it was supposed to be like what afflicted artists and so on. Anyway... But what was interesting in that, from a language teacher's point of view, and I remember doing work on this from, from Macmillan back in the day, um, was looking at the way we, uh, what, what do we talk about when we talk about illness and what kind of metaphors? So there's a way of looking at language as metaphors. So for example, in English, in to give a different one apart from illness, like intelligence. Intelligence is sometimes viewed as a light. So for example, someone can be bright, or he's a bright spark, means yeah, that's spark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the metaphor, and I want you to think of, there are several ones that, uh, that work with illness, and I want you to think of examples. Okay. So for example, the metaphor is in English that illness is down and health is up. So can you think of terms when we talk about sick, that, that, that when you're sick, it's down, and when you're well, it's up? Uh, oh, I can think of a down one because it just came into my head. So yeah. you've got, yeah, but it is down because you said down. It's run down. Yeah, uh, you feel you feel run down means that you're thinking. Or you uh, could also, I, I'm, I'm. Uh, he went down with a cold. Oh yes, yes, yes of course. Uh, un under the, I'm thinking of idioms because yes, uh, un un idioms, under, under, the, under the weather would be. Yeah, you're under one. the weather as well. Yeah, yeah. You feel when you feel really low, 
you feel run down. Um, if, and if an illness is getting bad, it's sinking fast. Um, mm -hmm. And that, or, or the other one, which I think is definitely is um, if you are laid low or even most common, you fall ill. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, and so the, other, the other side of that coin is health is up, so... Yeah, so how would you, uh, how would you come uh, How would you come up? Um, I guess, well, I'm trying to think, again, I'm stuck in the idiom, get, get over it, but that's not really yeah, an uppy yeah, phrase. Yeah, getting over it, yeah, I suppose, but if you get over something, like getting over a fence means you climb up over it. Um, uh, get back another on one. your feet. So it's yes, kind of, get a, back on your feet, bounce back, mm, okay. um, sh throw it off um etc okay so the next one is illness is an enemy attacker oh well illness always invades isn't it yes so, this is a, so a those, cell, so, an infected cell invades yeah. and I mean, I mean, what, what I, it's interesting because I, I was watching uh, what i what i have watched about the the uh the disease that shall not be named um yeah. is um is is always when you're watching the videos or whatever it invades the cells is is um uh, is the language that they use with it. So yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, There's oh, a fight, and you fight illness as well, don't you? Exactly. You ah, fight illness. Yeah, um, yeah. You have a heart attack, or um, you fight off illness. Um, you are vulnerable to infection. Um, the okay. body's defenses. Um, you resist infection. Um, you battle uh, infection. Exactly. You battle to save life. Uh, there's there's no magic bullet. Uh, That's really interesting. I've never thought about it this way. But it's quite interesting. Exactly. Uh, in, uh, anymore. Uh, yes, there's another one. Illness is an unnatural state. So this uh, is quite important because if you view this, it kind of affects the way you think of it. But think of words like you are a shadow of your formal self. I'm not feeling myself. I'm out of sorts. I'm yeah, back yeah. to my I'm back to my old self again. So yeah. the idea here is like if you if you talk about it that way, then it kind of actually like makes you feel that way. And the last one that I'll check you on is illness is monochrome. Health is colorful. Think of words like that then. Illness is monochrome and uh, health is. Oh, well, yeah, people glow, don't they? That would yes, be, exactly. That, you, that would be glow. colorful. Yeah, you glow. Um, blooming in blooming uh, yeah. health, yeah. yeah. Uh, what about what about the monochrome? Illness is a monochrome. Uh, so that would be, I don't know, if you're monochrome, you would want black, white, gray. Uh, yes. Yeah, like if you say, oh, his skin is gray. Oh, okay, yeah. Sort of gray, but it's like, but ashen, white, pale, off color. Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't even think, yeah, looking white, you look white is a normal expression, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. You look yeah, white, yeah. or you're yeah. fate, I'm fading, I'm fading quickly, he faded uh, away, yeah. Jeez. That's so really, there you I, go. Isn't actually, that, Lindsay, that's one of the most interesting things you've brought to the podcast in a while. <laughs> well, excellent. Damn, da damned with faint praise. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> there are, I mean, there, there are, like anything in English, there are lots of idi idioms. Uh, yes, there? exactly. And I think a lot of the idioms do fall into those different metaphors. They do. Yeah. About. And there's a way that sometimes you can, you can teach this way. So you can teach, like, as a vocabulary set, you know, illness is a war and then you can teach all the phrases around that which is what i did if you check it on one stop english with my name lindsey clanfield metaphor lessons one stop english i think i have some lessons on there about that you just turned that into an advert for yourself amazing well done bravo bravo <laughs> excellent that was um, impressive um um yeah so this this idea of of uh, teaching english was quite uh, teaching like the health words and what i think all all of us as teachers have probably yeah. taught an idiom set of uh, of yes. language around uh, 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 around health and so on it, again a, a common um, course book trope perhaps yeah uh but what interested me a little bit was the way around i mean i've taught for many years and i've taught many things but i've never taught english for the medical profession have you? neither have i i mean i've had a nurse in my class and a doctor but i've never yeah, exactly but, but english for doctors and i wondered uh i i and, and it was kind of like I, you know how do you go about that is it the same as how do you get into it how do, i mean is it the same as teaching any kind of esp kind of thing mm -hmm. and then it occurred to me that i actually know someone that teaches medical english and writes uh quite substantially uh, lots of course book up, books on it so um double interview a eh? two interviews in one one oh, uh, wow. one episode well, so i interviewed it. ros wright who uh has written uh quite substantially on the area of teaching English uh, to the medical profession. And I think we have to make that difference. We're not, it's not like teaching idioms and, and that, and that we do yeah. is general English. This is teaching, um, well, she'll tell you, but it's like teaching doctors and nurses, basically how to deal with patients in English. Um, and it is fascinating. And I, I have learned a new framework as we shall see.